again, we'd like to say good morning. We do honor and praise God for being, being right in on another Sunday morning. And uh, at this time, we're going to go on open up. We're going we're gonna to ask our um, mother Bond to give us a song. And uh, Mr. Tyson to lead us in prayer. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Our lesson for today is from the book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter, verses 22 through 32. And the subject is persevere in times of difficulty. Now, today's lesson is another story about Jacob. Um, you really got to go back to the beginning of verse of chapter 32 to really see uh, <clears throat> when Jacob when when Jacob learned that uh, <clears throat> uh, we got to go back to a uh, little bit further and, and you know it says uh, when Esau really woke up and realized what all that he had lost and how he had been tricked of his birthright and all that kind of stuff uh, he's very hurt and he says uh, he hated Jacob for what he had done to him. So he said he was going to kill Jacob, but he was going to wait till his father died because his father was ailing, and, and he didn't want his father to see that the oldest son killed the youngest son. So he says, I'm just going to wait. He, he said that, uh, he, he said, uh, I'm going to wait. He said, my father is getting weaker. He's going to be gone shortly. So then I'm going to kill uh, Jacob. And, and, and it's uh, Rebecca, somebody, 
somebody heard him say it, and somebody, somehow another word got to Rebecca, his mother. And uh, she sent for Jacob to say, when he came, she said, listen here. She said, get up, get out, and go as fast as you can, because your brother is, is going to kill you. She said, you listen to me. He said, well, go over to your uncle, Laban, over in Haran. He said, go over there and stay with him for a while until Esau cool off. And then, and kind of forget what you've done. He said, they said, I'll send for you. And, and uh, she said, because why should I lose two sons in one day? She said, I I'll send for you. But Jacob went to his uncle Esau, which was uh, Laban. Laban was, I'm sorry, Laban. Laban was Rebekah's brother. So that was his uncle. He went to him, stayed with him. But he didn't know. One thing he didn't know, that he was just as tricky as he was. And so instead of, instead of, uh, Jacob going somewhere where he thought he was hiding, Jacob ran into some problem with his uncle because his uncle was full of tricks too. And he said, uh, <clears throat> so he said to him, he said, uh, uh, come on, you family, just come on in. I'm so glad to have you here. Come on in and enjoy yourself. So he went in, he worked for, his, worked for him, and he told him, so, you know, just call we family, that don't mean you had to work for nothing. So what what were you what is your price of your wages? And he told him, he said, Well, uh <clears throat> I tell you, I like your daughter, your old your daughter Rachel, and I work for um say I, I I she would be what you know, she'd be my pay. He said, Okay, you work for seven years. And he worked for um his uncle Laban for seven years, and at the end of seven years he gave him the other daughter, Leah. And he when uh when Jacob complained, he said, well, why do you do that to me, Lord? Why? He said, uh, uh, you told me that I could have Rachel. He said, well, why do you do that to me? He says, uh, well, in our country, the custom is you don't give away the young daughter before you give away the older. The older one gets given away first. Well, see, Laban could have told Jacob that from the get-go. When Jacob told him that he would work for Seven, when he told him he was going to work for seven years for his door, he could have told him, now look, what, tell him about the custom. But he was so tricky. He was so sly and cunning, he didn't tell him that. And so he told him, said, well, you can get Rachel, but you got to work seven more years. Poor Jacob worked seven more years. And I'm sure during this time, Jacob was thinking about, I reckon I'm getting, you know, I reckon I'm getting what I deserve or whatever the, the case may be. So, uh, he said, uh, <coughs> Jacob said, well, I don't know. So he worked. And then after that, his uncle persuaded him to stay another six years. See, he was prospering. God was prospering Jacob. So uh, Laban was getting benefits that he didn't even have to work for or whatever. And, uh, <coughs> and, and he says that, um, he, said, he said, well, why don't you just stay here a little while? I mean, after the seven years, the next seven years, which was 14 years, he did get Rachel, but he already had Leah. Then he had to get her first. It sounds like Laban was trying to get Leah off his hand, <laughs> even though he said that the custom in the country was you marry the youngest one, the oldest one first. So uh, he could have told him, very easy told him that in the beginning, but he didn't. But that's some more way his tricks were. And see, uh, Jacob had finally met someone who, who uh, you know, who was just as sly and cunning as he was. And so, you know, that tells us that, you know, it can be a while or whatever, but the seeds you sow come back to you. As they used to say uh, I, in the old days, it's coming up again. And so uh, Jacob had no idea his, his uncle was like that until he had been there and invested so much time with him. And then J Jacob learned how Laban's sons were t talking about him, saying that he got rich at his father's expense. And so uh, he also noticed the changes in his uncle's attitude. And that's when God told Jacob, said, return home to your family, to your land, land of your father and, and your relatives there. Said, I'll go with you. 
So this is where our story picks up, where Jacob is going, is preparing to return to his home. But one of the things about this, it says, when Jacob started on his journey, you know, he got up through the night, so he took his family and went across the Jordan River at the Jabbok Ford. And the ford was, is a shallow stream where you can cross a big body of water. And he took his family across there. Then he took all his possession across there. And he came back. Uh, after he took all of them there, he, he came back and, and uh, was alone. And as he was alone, then he wrestled. It says, the, the uh, scripture says he wrestled with the, uh, with, the, with the man. And he wrestled all night up until daybreak. That must have been some wrestling match. Up to daybreak. And said that the man did not, saw that he could not, uh, <clears throat> could not uh, have a, he could not win. So he asked uh, Jacob, said, what's your name? Jacob said, Jacob. And then Jacob asked him, said, what's your name? He said, why you want to know my name? And then it said, it blessed him right there. You see, when Jacob was on the way home, he knew about the meeting he was going to have with Esau. He was already afraid of that. And, but what he didn't know about this meeting that God had ordained for him with this wrestling match where he would wrestle all night long. But he held his own. He kept on. He persevered until daybreak. And then he, when the man blessed him, he also pulled his hip out of joint. And, and you know, Jacob says, uh, <clears throat> uh, he said, you know, I'm not going to let you. The man said, let me go. It's daybreak. He said, no, no, I'm not let you go till you bless me. There again, Jacob saw an opportunity, and he took, he took advantage of that opportunity. He said, no, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. He blessed him, and he pulled his hip out of joint at the same time. You know, uh, <clears throat> sometimes uh, you just don't know. You're asking for one thing, and sometimes when you get it, it comes with another thing, and sometimes it's a package deal. Sometimes you don't always have um, get it just like you want it. Very seldom do we get it like we want. But sometimes we don't get what we want because God knows that sometimes what we want ain't good for us. And sometimes he, 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 instead of giving us what we want, he gives us what we need. Amen. And sometimes, you know, you say, God had not answered my prayer. And, and he has answered, but he just didn't answer the way you thought he would. That's right. I know sometimes I prayed, and, and I just really didn't see that. I didn't see it coming. There were several things that took place before the prayer ever got answered because he had it. He had to do things in us sometimes so we can be able to receive some things. Sometimes we ain't ready for what we're asking for. Because if we were, when we got it, we wouldn't know. You know, we're not, we're just not up to. We ask what we want. God give us what we need. So that place, Jacob called that, that place Peniel because he said, I have seen the face of God and I live to tell about it. Because in, in, in your scripture reading it, you usually say, you know, a lot of people, you hear God, you talk about God, but you don't actually see God and live. And then Jacob said, he rose up and he passed through Penua and he was limping as he went. And, and the scripture said, that's why the Israelites don't eat the muscle because the hip was thrown, because jo Jacob's hip was thrown out of joint. So they don't eat in that, that muscle part. Now, you know, God waited till Jacob was alone. And, and he's away from all distraction. Before he came in, before he started the wrestling match, he waited until everything was quiet. Jacob didn't have any kind of distraction because his folks was already on the other side. He had gotten them out of harm's way. And he, Jacob, partly, when he was thinking about Esau, he, he partly, he moved his family on out. He divided them into two groups and he said, well, maybe if one get attacked, the other group can get away. So that's what he was doing. 
But he didn't have nothing there to hinder him. He couldn't do nothing but listen to the Lord. And, and, and you know, God desired to, to rename Jacob and give him a, give him a life-changing experience. And see, when the man blessed him, asked him what his name, he said, Jacob, he said, well, it ain't going to be Jacob no more. From now on, it'll be Israel. And see, uh, God wanted to bless Jacob and give him a life-changing blessing. You know, he had been called a lot of things. He was called swindler, uh, cheater, schemer, and all this stuff. But then they gave him a new name called Israel. And so... Uh, <clears throat> And, and many and many believers, you know, many of us like Jacob, uh, we had different names before God changed our name. For one thing, we were called sinners, we were called liars, cheaters, drunkards, and all. That was until God changed our name to son or daughter, Christian or follower. And you see, when you look around at some of the things that, that happened here, uh, he he should have uh, uh, take Laban for instance when when Jacob was over there he should have told him about the custom and then with this here with him coming back to his hometown now he um, what he did was that <clears throat> he sent his servants out with a lot of cattle a lot of gifts from Esau. God had already told him, said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to protect you as you travel. Go back to your home. I'm going to look out for you. And so he, he already had God's assurance. But he was going to force God's hand. He was like, just in case God don't bless me, I've got this going for me. You know, uh, either you with God or you're not. And see, and, and he sent all his servants and told them, said, uh, you tell him that, that uh, your servant, tell him his, these are from his servant to his master. Now, um, he didn't have to do all that. All uh, Jacob had to do was do what he could have done, but just come clean, you know, just come clean and say, Esau, send words, say, you know, I want to come home. I want to make peace with you. I want to apologize because I'm sorry. I know I was wrong. No, he didn't do it. He kept scheming. He kept getting up this little thing for him. Go get him that. Go get him that. Give him some all the cattle he gave him, all that stuff. He gave him everything but the truth thing. He would not come clean. The only reason he did all that because he wanted to pacify. Um, he wanted to pacify Esau so that Esau would not kill him. But uh, by that time, Esau probably had him cooled off some, and he won't even, you know, he might not would have done that then. But he didn't, he pacified. He just did not get, do what he should have done. And, and like I said, he did a lot of unnecessary stuff. He just, uh, in, instead of uh, coming clean to, and to the Lord and with Esau, and, and then things would have been all right, but he didn't do that. He didn't do it. He was just conniving. And this is the way a lot of things are in the world today. You, all you got to do is just, just come clean and say, oh, I messed up. I, I, I messed up, I, I, I'm sorry, I made a mess of things, and let, you know, and that be it. And, and then you're done with it. But no, Jacob was, he was so used to being conniving. His mother was just as bad as he was. And, and he was used to, like I said, he used to being the winner of everything. He couldn't, and you notice when, when he was wrestling with the man, and the man said, let me go, it's almost daybreak. He said, I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. So he felt like he had the upper hand all over again. And every time Jacob felt like he had the upper hand, you know, he'd do whatever he wanted to do. He was such a schemer until he had an encounter with God. And it kind of reminds you of Paul when he was Saul, when he was on the Damascus Road, you know. Paul was so terrible. He would drag Christians out and carry them out, torture and kill them. And, but when he had an encounter with God on the way, on the way to get some more Christians to persecute, after that, and he became blind, and when he got right, he was a different person. And many of the disciples did not really want to deal with him, even after his name was changed to Paul, because they felt like he was, they, they couldn't trust him. 
So it, so it was like with Jacob. <clears throat> but see, Jacob, I know that his uncle mistreated him. Certainly he did. But one thing about it is he kind of got, got a taste of his own medicine when he went to work for his uncle. He had no idea that it would be anything like it, like it was. The uncle treated him so good and asked him at front, come on in, you family, you blood, and all that stuff, and they were just tickled pink. But there was a lot coming. There was a lot behind it. So he said, and then when he wanted to leave, he wouldn't let him leave. At first, the first time he left with his family, his wives and children and all this stuff, he pursued and brought it back. And uh, <clears throat> he had no idea. But I'm sure during this time he thought about, I guess I had it coming. Mm -hmm. See, we have to be careful of the seeds that we sow, because they will come up. That's right. Yeah. yeah, the seeds going to come up, no matter how. If the good, bad, or whatever, they're coming up. So, you know, and sometimes, <clears throat> like I said, God has changed. We was all something else before God changed us. Mm -hmm. Before God took us in as his children, we were all something different. And, you know, it's so amazing how, how God can write over our past, erase out our errors, and all that stuff of who we were, and give us a clean slate. Mm -hmm. and, and that's wonderful. And then see, Jacob, he did that to Jacob, but look how it had to be a while before he could get Jacob around, come around, whether he could understand that you don't need to trick people. You don't need to be like that. You just trust in me because I'm going to protect you. He told him he's going to protect him when he told him to go back to his hometown. Mm -hmm. He said, you don't need to do anything like that. And, and I'm there for you. But Jacob, like, uh, just in case God didn't bless him, so he, he went ahead and sent all those gifts to Esau and telling Esau was his master and he was the servant and all that kind of stuff. And uh, <clears throat> especially when he sent the, the servants out and they said, yeah, Esau's coming, so he got 400 men with him. Jacob almost passed out. Mm. He was afraid because he knew. But see, he was so, he was so guilty and everything. And that, that's all right. But all he had to do was just come clean. So yeah. Lord, and, and with, with the Lord and with Esau. Mm -hmm. And God, God fixed it up anyway. Mm -hmm. He got blessed. And he went on. He went through some stuff, but he got blessed. Mm -hmm. But see, when he was at home, he, he, was, he got what he wanted, did what he wanted to, mm -hmm. to, to who he wanted to. Yeah. And then Esau didn't, like I said, he, he wasn't quite up to the same kind of thing that Jacob was. Maybe he wasn't quite that smart. I don't know. But it seemed like they didn't think, you know, near like, because the whole family was off balance anyway. Yeah. But um, he, didn't, he didn't think like that. And, and Jacob took advantage of it. But see, Jacob thought he was really smart, really slick. When he went to stay with the uncle, he found out just how less he did know that there was somebody else out there just like he was. And so we have to think about those things. God wants us to treat each other like we want to be treated. And we want to, we, he wants us to remember when we are doing whatever we are doing, don't do it without God. Make sure God is in that, in that picture there so you can focus and do what's right. And even though in spite of everything, God still used Jacob. Use him mightily. But he had to do some things, some work in Jacob. And he got to do some work in us too. Amen. I know he has to do some work in me. I don't know about you. <laughs> but one thing you think about now, you got your big blessing come at a high cost. You know, as a believer, we must consider that blessing. Listen, pain and blessing are often present in the same spaces. Mm -hmm. Now look at Jacob. Jacob was, well, all of a sudden, you know, at, even at one time, all, all in together, Jacob was crippled and blessed. Mm -hmm. so, but, see, his blessing did not come. His, his blessing was not possible without the crippling. Mm -hmm. And the believers, and believers must consider what price they're willing to pay for their blessing. Sometimes you don't know and sometimes you do know. But 
there is uh, always a price. You pay a price for everything you do, say, or think. So you, go, you pay a price, and therefore, you know, be prepared. Because Jacob, he did persevere. He kept right on. He held on. He was a rascal. He held on to daybreak. And the man said, let me go. I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. So I'm saying he was a, he was a fighter in that way. But he was a schemer in many other ways. And all the names he used to be, the scheme or the tricks and all stuff, when, when he had his encounter with God, changed to Israel. Amen. Just like he changed our name. Yeah. Thank God he changed our name. Amen. But there's a price to pay for it. Amen. Now that he changes, you're no longer the drunkard, the mean person, or whatever you were before God has changed. Now he's expecting something out of you. Yes, he expecting, you know, some other things come. And that's why he tells us, you know, we've got to persevere in what we're going through. We all are going through some stuff these days. And I think it'll be like this until. It just, I think, you know, it's not going to get any better. But the Christian, the believer, they can band together. They can pray and they can move mountains. They can, well, so we have to continue on. We can't think about I wonder when it's going to get better. Don't even think about that because it ain't. Not, not like it used to be. We're looking at the new norm right now because this is the way it's going to be until we leave here. So we have to persevere. We have to push. We have to stay in prayer every day. We have to stay focused on God and we have to be honest with ourselves and with God. If we made a mistake, we're going to have to say, Lord, I'm coming back to you. I, I made a mistake. Help me. I need your help. And, and all you got to do, God wants you to come clean. Come clean with him and come clean with yourself. And if you've offended someone like uh, Jacob or something, go, go ahead and, and talk and confess to them too. Ask their forgiveness. All he wants you to do is to come clean. He's looking at the heart. And he don't want you to say on one side, I made a mistake, oh, I'm sorry, and then on the other side, wait until another opportunity to do the same thing. No. No, God, don't, he doesn't work that way. And when he, when he tells you something to do, he means for you to do that. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Do just what he told you. And, and don't mess with his word. So we have, we have to think about a lot of things. And, and as we go through, it just seems so hard sometimes just to, just to realize this is this happening today. This is happening now. This is happening in my family. I mean, there's just so much that keep you in, to keep you on your knees. But we, God telling us, we persevere. You got to hold on and you got to hold out. Because payday is coming. He said in a... In, he said he was coming, and a few Sundays ago we had Revelation, and it says that, uh, he said that he was coming, and he said, I'm coming, and I got my payroll with me. I'm going to pay everybody. What you get is what God got for you, but he said, I'm going to pay everybody. I got my payroll with me. So I'm saying that he expects us to keep going, keep going. And we can if we lift up each other. It wouldn't be so hard on one or two people if we lift up each other. So, you know, and sometimes, you know, we, we, sometimes we get frustrated when God don't answer right away. Uh, uh, don't answer our prayers, our requests. But, but we can't quit. We should continue to seek God through prayer and worship, Amen. no matter how long it takes. And, and remember, if you want the rainbow, you got to pass through the rain. Are there any comments? Thank you, ma'am. I want to thank God for you. I want to thank God for giving me that wonderful lesson to teach us. And we got to own up to what we do. Stop trying to hide it. Do the right thing. So what you do in the dark will come to the light. If I didn't try to dig a ditch for somebody else to fall in, guess what? I'm going to fall in that ditch or that pit myself where I do. So that's why everybody needs to 
hit on one accord and stop sugar coating the discipline of that. Do what you're supposed to do. And God will oh, work it out for you every time. Amen. Amen. Are there any other comments? If there aren't any if there aren't any other comments, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. Again, we want to thank you, uh, Trustee Woot. Uh, while we're waiting on the youth to come, we we'll had someone from the dark class to respond on the list for today. Okay, at, at this time, we're here from the youth. Each and every one for the, for the dog and the youth comment. At, at this time, we are, have our reading from the secretary. Minnesota Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Sunday School. Um, on the 18th day of September in the year of our Lord 2022, the school will call to order by Deacon Ray May at 1012. Opening him, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder by Nora Barnes. Prayer by Reverend Face and Scripture today, um, Genesis 32, 22 through 32. The subject of the lesson, Persevere in Times of Difficulty. The main thought, Genesis 32, 28. Total attendance today was 32. Total offering was $35.75. The weather was warm. The lesson was reviewed for 26 minutes by Trustee Wooden. Closing remarks were made by Mother Dupree. All your offices remain the same. Again, we want to thank you for that minute. Is there any correction? If not, we, we're going to receive the minute as given. And again, we want to want to thank each and every one for joining in. Thank our visitors for being here today. At this time, we got to stand and close out with the word "Amen." Amen. 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 Amen.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. We praise the Lord, our God, for just allowing us to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We give reference to our pastor, Pastor Lewis, to Dr. Knight, to Melissa Howard, to you, you, and you. That, that way I won't miss anyone. It's just good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. And I was listening to it, uh, the Sunday school lesson going on there. Sunday, you were saying, I know I've been changed. And I wish I could sing. Anybody know that song help me? I'm going to start off with a little bit of anyway. I, I know I've been changed. I, I know I've been changed. And I, I know I've been changed. The angels in heaven didn't change my name. I, I know I've been changed. I, I know I've been changed. I, I know I've been changed. The angels in heaven didn't change my name. Thank you, uh, Mother. You said sign. I said my name. Lord knows what we sing. He signed my name or changed my name. Either way, it had been changed. And I can tell, I know where the Lord had brought me from. And that's why I can say that. And I know there had been a change. So I give honor to the Lord and say, we give Christ to, to this morning for all what he had done for me to our family. We got to open our devotion service up. And I'm going to read just a couple of these verses that my ass, uh, Dick May will lead in prayer. Amen. <coughs> Come from Hebrews the tenth chapter. It said, "For the let me see, not the light here. For the Lord has a show of good things to come, and not that every and not that very image of this thing can never be those sacrifices which are offered year by year, contingent, making the coming there unto for perfect." For then would they that not have seed to be offered, because that they worship once purged should have no more constant of sin. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sin year <coughs> after year. I thank God that no more they would make the sacrifice year after year after year for the love not change, but Christ came that we might worship him. And that's what happened this morning, that, uh, that we come to worship him this morning. And we don't have to wait for year after year. We don't have to wait for uh, somebody slain a lamb or so. But we can give praise to God for where we are this morning. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask Dick and may we come and offer a prayer for us this morning. Every heart pray. Heavenly Father, and once again we come before you. We come, oh Father God, thank you for last night rest. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up and let us see another day. Because we're realizing, Father God, you didn't have to do it. But we are so grateful that you allowed us to see this day. So, Father, we just ask you is there anything? Uh, any sin that we have committed, Lord God, we pray that you forgive us, Lord. And Father God, where we will continue doing your will. Father, we just give you the glory and the praise. Because we realize, that, Father God, without you, we couldn't even make. So we just thank you for your grace and your mercy. How you washed over us when we laid down last night. And oh, Heavenly Father, we didn't even know whether we were going to see this day. But God, you, you, you let us see this day, and we thank you for it. So, Father, we just ask you to bless each and every one that in this building on today. Father, God, bless the one that online. Oh, God, let us continue giving you the praise and the glory. 
because we realize, Father God, all the praises belong to you. So God just bless it in a mighty way. Bless our pastor and all. Lord God, we ask asking all these blessings in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank Dick May for the uh, prayer this morning. I declare now that our, uh, our devotion service is, is now open. That you may have a song, prayer, whatever the testimony, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart this morning. But truly, God is good. And, 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 and you just think about it. He woke you up this morning. And this wasn't no old day you woke up to. This wasn't no you day, a day he borrowed from yesteryear, but this was a brand new day that God allowed us to see. And so it is nothing there, but Lord, I thank you for this day. For the Lord is good. And I, he, he, you know, I thank him for, 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 for the last night rest, for yesterday, all week, all while I've been there. I, I pray, but. It's this just a brand new day, and just in case I didn't get it all right yesterday and missed some last night, he gave me a brand new day to work on today. Amen. 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 There be one. He has set me free. God. Yesterday, we kind of sound, you know, yesterday when I came here, I was on my cane yesterday, I joke about it, but uh, from my back hurting so bad, it hurting all last week, I don't like complaint. I just don't like complaint. And, and, you know, believe it or not, I got this morning around about 5.30, started getting ready, so I couldn't sleep because my back was hurting. And the Satan always said, you ain't going to church. I uh, lay down thinking, and hey, hey, you, you back hurt, you kidding hurt this morning. I said, that's a lie. I'm here this morning. I don't have my cane there. It's out there in the car. Amen. But, you know, I, I'm saying it's, it's those little bit of things. It don't have to be nothing real big. Y'all know what I mean? It don't have to be nothing real big. It don't have to be nothing that uh, a car turn, a turn will call like that. It's those little bit of things. I give God praise for because God is good. And He's been good to me. I know He's been good to you. So I just give Him praise. Give Him praise for a little bit. And you know, before you get the dollar bill, forget the dollar, you first got to have the penny. <laughs> you keep praying with enough penny, you have enough dollar. You keep looking, you get a dollar sooner or later. But give God a praise. Amen. Amen. I, I do give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor Lewis, Mr. Howard, Mr. Knight. And, uh, I can't even say the name. But to all members, to, to everyone in the house, truly, 
God has been good to me. And uh, I, I just thank you for what he's done. I thank you for what he's going to do. What he's he going to do in my life. Because realizing if I didn't have God on my side, I, I don't know where I'd be. I, I know I won't be serving the Lord. But I thank, I thank him for saving me and just just leading and protecting me. You know, when I'm down, you know, he's right there with me. And he, he lead me through, he got me. And when I go through things, and once I come out, you know, I just give God the glory and the praise. Amen. Amen. I know it was him that worked me the whole time. Sometimes it seems like people will leave you. Well, people will leave. But God, he, when he takes you through a trial, he's going to bring you out on the other side. Amen. And truly, I thank him for it. I just have to continue praying for me, and I'll pray for you the best I know how. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask you to stand again. I heard Reverend Murphy say, easy to get him to sit down, hard to get him to stand up. Let's stand up one more time again high and pray. Hallelujah! 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 Our pastor's brief, and then the welcome by Sister Delia Dupree.
Give it honor to God, Pastor Lewis, Lady Lewis, Dr. Knight, Minister Howard, Deacons, Mother, Saints, and Friends. The announcements are as followed. Pastor's vision statement. I believe that all people matter to God and that Christ's message and ministry through the local church is the hope of the world. Reverend Malcolm E. Lewis. Upcoming events. Minister Vanita <coughs> Howard is requesting that members support the SWAT Gala on October 22nd. <coughs> Doors open at 6 p.m. Tickets are $35. Please see Minister Howard for tickets. Please pay careful attention to the remaining announcements in your bulletin. Through Thought for the week. I, it's a privilege to serve God. After all, serving God is joy and happiness. Are there any announcements from the floor? Uh, good morning. I'll just like to announce that um, on fourth Sunday at Creek Chapel there, we celebrate, and I forgot how many years, the 100th anniversary. Uh, I'll be playing the team, but I think uh, 11 o'clock it will be one of the sons of the church, the Reverend Michael Matthews. I think he's down in Washington, D.C. And then at 4 o'clock, Bishop Robert Gore. That's it. Amen. Good morning, church family and friends. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Jordan proves here for me to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Another day that the Lord has blessed and kept us. I'm so glad about it this morning. It's good to see your smiling faces Amen. this morning, to know that the Lord has blessed us and given us another opportunity that we have uh, were able to awaken out of our sleep and slumber this morning. And not only that, but he clothed us in our right mind and given us a reasonable portion of health and strength. And we are able to come into the house of the Lord on this day. Some somewhere this morning, they were not able to do that this morning. But God has blessed us. So we ought to make the most of this day that the Lord has given us. And we ought not wait till somebody tell us. But we ought to go ahead and say, thank you, Lord, for another day. We ought to say, thank you, Lord, for just being good to us. For we love him because he first loved us. I'm so delighted to uh, have to say a quick shout out to Reverend Rice back there. Uh, and uh, uh, he does not have her with him this morning, but uh, uh, he has a new fiance. Since you last said him, he popped the question and evidently she said yes. So we thank God for, for him and thank God for her. So just continue to pray for them as the Lord shall move them forward. And I think they're looking at some time next year, saying they're not sure. So God is good. And not only for him, but just look around. I was just excited and just really ecstatic when I heard a number from Sunday school for the youth this morning. And God has done a wonderful thing to have 14 youth in Sunday school. We ought, to, we ought to be shouting all over the place because all our children are not lost. They're just seeking. And we have got to give them the direction. So we thank God for, for each of you this morning, uh, recognizing our ministerial staff, Dr. Knight, and Minister Howard. To the Reverend Marvin Dickens back there. Reverend Marvin Dickens. All right. 
God bless you. Your cousin, all right. All right. Uh, so we got the minister's corner back there, too. Amen. God bless you. It's amazing somehow or another they, they, they sort each other out, got right side by side there. Uh, amen. Spirit knows the spirit. So God bless you. Uh, we're delighted to have you with us today. And to our deacons, mothers, uh, uh, trustees, members, and friends, we thank God for you being in the midst today. And uh, we're uh, someone is following behind me to give you the official welcome, but we know that you are here today. It's not by accident because you just don't pass by Anderson Chapel just on your the beaten path. So if you came here today, you came with a purpose, and we pray that you will leave uh, with the word of God today. Amen. Amen. Um, we'll turn it back over. Oh God, we thank you for the choir that's going to sing your songs of Zion, oh God. 
Oh God, we thank you for the ushers, oh God, that are going to welcome your people, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for what you're doing in our youth, oh God. We just want to tell you thank you, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you continue to do all that you're going to do in each and every one of us, oh God. Oh God, you know what you have purpose for each of us, oh God. And we just want to tell you thank you, oh God. Oh God, we bless your holy name, oh God. In the name of Jesus.
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me lie down in the green pastures. He leading me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, will I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rob thy spouse, thou comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our Father, which art in heaven, who be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, which we forgive our debtors. <coughs> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
First, I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Pastor Lewis, Dr. Knight, Minister Howard, um, our other ministers present, to our deacons, mothers, members, and friends, good morning. Good morning. Our birthday list for September is as follows. Sister Shirley Woodard's birthday is on the 6th. If you want to, you can give your age. I am 77. Are there any other birthdays in the month of September? I have um, twin brothers and sisters. Their birthday was the 17th. They were 60 years old. I have a sister. Her birthday is September 29th. My daughter's birthday is September 29th. My um, uh, grandson's birthday is September 27th. And my brother's girlfriend's birthday is September 2nd. Amen. Amen. Any others? Jaden. What, what's, what's the date? 10th. How old are we, Jaden? 10? All right. Amen. Ten. Any others? <laughs> All right. Can you sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Is there anyone celebrating an anniversary in the month of September? If so, you can give the date. Um, uh, I have a date, um, September 15th is the third year since we were in our car accident. I still don't remember that day at all. The bride, the bride. My best friend, Karen Williams and Carl Williams, they will be married 42 uh, years on September the 27th. Amen. 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 Any others? Let's sing happy anniversary. Happy, happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Thank you. Many more. Many more. Thank you. Amen. Amen. This is a part that everybody can take part in. We're going to ask um, the trustees and the ushers for our offering. Every time I try to do right, every time I try. 
Father, mm -hmm. which art in heaven, yes. how to be thy name. Yes. Lord, it's your low and armor servant yes. coming to you one more time. Yes. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for when we woke up this morning, 
our family circle wasn't broken. And thank you, Lord, even if we woke up and the family circle were broken, you gave us comfort. We really want to say thank you, Lord. We have a thousand things to ask you for, Lord, but we only have one thing to say. It's thank you, Lord. Lord, we have aches and pains in our bodies to this morning, Lord. We want you to remove them, Lord. We want to bring it up to the altar and lay it by your feet, Lord. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for them aches and pains. Because if we didn't have them, Lord, we wouldn't be knee-bowed and body down this morning. Lord, see, like when you give us a, a, a obstacles in our life, you bring us closer to you. And so, Lord, we want to thank you for those obstacles. This morning, Lord, some have high blood pressure. Some have low blood pressure. Some have cancer. Lord, some dealing with a heart issue. Some dealing with financial problems, Lord. But we ask you to come by and touch them, Lord. Touch them with that finger of love, Lord. And remove whatever obstacles they have. And Lord, whatever they was blocking them from, from receiving your word in their hearts, Lord, please remove it. Lord, anything that's stopping them this morning for worshiping you, from giving you the honor and the praise, remove it, Lord. Lord, whatever you feel that we're coming short of, please give it to us, Lord. We can pray and ask you for a thousand things, Lord, but you know what we need. And whatever we're in the need of, Lord, we're asking you to deliver it to right now, Lord. Grant it to us, Lord. Grant it to us, Lord. The ones that have backache, remove that ache, Lord. Remove it. The ones that's crying about a loved one, come to them and show them the way, Lord. Comfort them. Lord, you said you would not leave us comfortless. And Lord, we ask in, in your son Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask you that you take our pastor down into the storeroom. Give him wisdom and knowledge, Lord. And when you let him go, when you let him go, Lord, let him come out and preach your word with boldness. Lord, we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name.
There's a storm out on the ocean. Puerto Rico is in the sights. Pray for the people of Puerto Rico. Just pray one for another. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 7. And we're going we're gonna to read verses 55 through 60. And if those of you that desire to stand, you may stand for the reading of God's word. But he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the... Excuse me. And then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin at their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Amen. Pray with us. Eternal Father, Lord, we thank you this day for your blessings. Father, we thank you for another opportunity that you have allowed us to come and share a word with these your children. Now, Father, dear Lord, take Malcolm out, dear Lord, and fill me, dear Lord, with your with your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, the preacher, dear Lord, the Holy Amen. Spirit, dear Lord. May preach your word, dear Lord. Let that same spirit abide with these your children. That someone may be moved, dear Lord, to climb higher. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 But he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Verse 60, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. We want to talk to you this morning, as the Lord will allow, fighting the good fight. Amen. Fighting the good fight. Kind of is ironic, really, that we use the subject of fighting a good fight as we talk about Stephen's journey. Because they laid the clothes at a young man's feet named Saul. And it was Saul who was converted to Paul. That said at the end of his journey, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Somewhere between Paul standing and agreeing to the stoning of Stephen, Paul fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. But before he fought that fight, Stephen had a vision. Yeah, yeah. Stephen won home. The apostles had gotten together mm -hmm. in chapter 6 of the book of Acts, and you find that they appoint deacons. We don't have time to go through the whole chapter 6 and chapter 7, but read it at your leisure. You will find that 
the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So, so they look out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of God's word. One of these seven men named Stephen. The scripture itself says that Stephen was filled with the Holy Ghost. Stephen was one who really, <coughs> excuse me, if you will, kind of outshined the other six. Mm -hmm. Because Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The other six was not described in that matter. Mm -hmm. But Stephen was described as being full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Yes. That's a good combination. Yeah. When you have the faith. And you got the Holy Ghost. When you got that, you got something. When you got that, you can stand when all around is sinking fast. Stephen began his journey and he began in chapter 7. It says that he was preaching the word. There was those who called him in because of the word that he was preaching. Yes. Don't you know when you give the word of God, when you're preaching the truth, there are those who will not accept the word of God. Yes. But when you're preaching the word of God, yes. you can stand on the word of God. Yes. No matter whatever else may go on around you, because the word of God will stand all yes. by itself. Yes. So Paul, I mean, Stephen began to, to, to share the word of God. And as they called him in, he began to share with them from Abraham through Jesus. He began to remind them of all that they had done. How they had, how they had uh, persecuted and how they had prosecuted even the the prophets. And we come down. Verse 54 says that when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and gashed on him with their teeth. They weren't happy with what Stephen had said. They wasn't happy with the things that Stephen had reminded them of. But Stephen being full of the Holy Ghost, yes, yes. looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Yes. Church of the living God, when, 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 when people rail against you, when people gash on you with their teeth, when people talk about you, when people will try to run you out of town, if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you can look steadfast. Yes. 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 Now, Stephen being filled with the Holy Spirit, this Stephen's behavior was a great contrast to the behavior of the council. Mm -hmm. The fact that Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit shows the source of his courage, wisdom, and power in preaching. Yes. Yes. When you have the Holy Spirit, yes. when the Holy Spirit is leading you, yes. when you are let down into the storehouse of wisdom, yes. then you have power in the preaching of the gospel. You have power in the teaching of the gospel. Yes. You have power in the singing. You have power in prayer when you are in yes. the Spirit. And because Stephen was in the spirit, mm -hmm. he looked 
And he saw the glory of God standing on the right hand, of glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand. Yeah. It's, it's difficult exactly to describe exactly what Stephen saw. Uh -huh. yeah. Some uh, say that it was a vision. Some say it was some sort of window to heaven. But one thing we know is that the scripture says that he saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Yes. Jesus standing on the right hand of God is a significant note. Because Jesus standing here as opposed to the more common description of him sitting in heaven. As in Matthew 26 and 64. Uh, Jesus said to, to them, you say, nevertheless I say unto you hereafter. You shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. But here, Stephen say he sees him standing. One of the reasons why uh, I, 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 I conceive that he's standing is because, think about it, when we go to the ball games, when our sons or daughters are participating in sporting events, and they are out there and they are doing their best. Sometimes, even when they're stumbling and fall, we want to give them encouragement. We stand and let them know that we are there. But here Jesus is standing. Stephen is being persecuted. Stephen is going through something. Stephen has fulfilled a promise. But here are the council. They are trying him. They are testing. But Stephen, Jesus is giving a standing ovation. Yes. Stephen, whose faith made him unique among believers, mm -hmm. among all the followers of Jesus, Stephen was the first to be marked. Yes. They took Stephen to stone him. Mm -hmm. As they took him out to stone him, then Stephen cried out with a loud voice. Yes. They cried out. They cried out as they heard what Stephen had said. Mm -hmm. They could not bear the truth. They stopped their ears and they ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city to stone him. And they laid the clothes at a young man named Saul's feet. They were like young children. Have you ever seen a two-year-old throw a temper tantrum? Yeah, yeah. When you tell them to do something, they have put their hand in their ear. No, 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 no. This is how these grown men act. They could not stand to hear what Stephen was saying, but it was the truth. And although they could not stand to hear what he was saying, Stephen still declared that Jesus was standing on the right hand of God. It was too much for them. The Sanhedrin reacted quickly, violently, and together. And when Jesus, before the same body of men, declared that he was sitting on the right hand of God, they had the same reaction and sealed his death. As a blasphemy. This is one of the reasons why the Sanhedrin had this mighty reaction. Because Stephen actually verified what Jesus said. Jesus said that he would be on the right hand side of his father in heaven. And now Stephen says, I see him standing. For Stephen to suggest that the crucified Jesus stood in a position of all authority at the right hand of God must have ranked as blasphemy in their thinking of those who knew that a crucified man died under the divine curse. They cried with a loud voice, stopped their ears, ran at him with one accord. These men were distinguished Older men behaving this way, the reaction of the Sanhedrin saying the stream, but it's typical of those who reject God. 
and those that are lost spiritually and have spiritual insanity. They wailed in agony and covered their ears at the revelation of God, which they regarded as blasphemy. They ran at him. This is the use of an ancient Greek word, homarium. This is the same word used to describe the mad rush of the pigs into the sea. This was an out of control mob rushing at Stephen. People are railing when you tell them the truth. They'll talk about it. They'll try to cash you out. But I want to tell you this morning, it is a dangerous thing to be religious apart from a real relationship with God. It is a dangerous thing to be religious apart from a relationship with God, a real relationship. This fulfills what Jews warned about in John, what Jesus warned about in John 16, 2 and 3. Yes, the time is coming that whosoever will kill you will think that they are doing God a service. Yes. And these things they will do because they know not the Father, mm -hmm. nor do they know Jesus. Amen. Church of a living God, and they cast him out of the city to stone him. The extent of their rays was shown by the execution yes. of Stephen, which was done without regard for Roman law and which was performed according to the traditional Jewish custom of stoning. Yes. You know, Church of a Living God, some people, they just don't like you, and sometimes when they don't like you, when they get opportunity, they'll go outside of the law to do what they'll do to you. Yes. Think about it right now. You think about all the lynchings in the south of our black brothers and sisters, all because of the color of their skin. Yes. They went beyond the call of the law, and they took them out, and they just dragged them behind vehicles, and they hung them from trees. And this is what they did with Stubbs, with Stephen. They went without the regard of the law. They took him out. They cruised, they stoned him. Even with the stoning, Stephen still stayed strong. Stephen's last words, as they stoned Stephen, he was calling on God, saying, Lord, receive my spirit. Church of a living God, when you fight the good fight, when you know that God is on your side, yes. even at the end of the day's journey, Jesus. even at the end of your life, yes. though they may slay you, you're still going to call on God. Yes. Because for God I live, and for God I die. Yes. They, Stephen, they were stoned, taking him to stone him. And Stephen's life ended in the same way as he lived it, yes. in complete trust in God. Yes. Believing that Jesus would take care of him in the life to come. When you fight the good fight, when you hold on to God's unchanging hand, you don't worry about what your end's going to be because you know that my life is in his hand. Church of the living God, I'm so glad to know that my life is in his hand. I'm glad to know that somebody else can testify that my life is in his hand. Church of a living God, he said, receive my spirit. But not only that, but look at what Stephen does here. They are on the cross. He looked and said, Father, he as he kneeled down, he said, Lord, lay not this sin at their feet. Church of a living God, when those around you will do you wrong, when those around you will try to slay you, do you pray this prayer? Lord, lay not their sin at their feet. Church of a living God, I told you a few weeks ago that Jesus on the cross say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's a hard thing, church. When people talk about you, it's a hard thing when people scandalize your name. It's a hard thing when they will kill you for you to go down on your knee and say, Lord, have mercy. It's a hard thing to say, Lord, lay not this charge to their sin. 
name, church of a living God. But let me tell you something right now. If you are able to pray this prayer, if you are able to go down that path, if you are able to fight the good fight, let me tell you something about it this morning. Some lives can be changed. And I believe that's one of the reasons why some of us don't want to say this prayer. Because we don't want our enemies to be saved. But God said, it's not his will that any shall be lost, but that all shall be saved. Look at this right now. There at the, at the stoning of Stephen, there was a man called Saul. And he prayed a prayer. Lord, lay not this sin at their strong. But church shall a living God because he prayed, because Stephen prayed for those who were stoning him. Saul had a Damascus road in spirit. Church of a living God. And we find a lot of the epistles written by Paul right now. Why? Because the prayers of Stephen touched his heart. Church of a living God. Because Stephen cried out. And sometimes, church, we got to cry out. We have got to let them know that for God I live and for God I die. We have got to fight the good fight. The good fight right now is serving Jesus Christ. We can fight with our fists. We can fight with our words. We can say, I'm going to lay down my religion and tell you what I think about you. But church of a living God, you need to hold on to your religion. Go down on bending knees and say, Lord, have mercy. Change their heart. And if they change their heart, there may be a blessing in the broken point. For God has a blessing. God can do what no other can do. God can take a sinner and make him a preacher. God can take a sinner and make her a singer. God can take a sinner and make him a deacon. God can take those who you think have no use and God can change their life. It doesn't matter whether they're 10, 30, or 50, 70, or 80. As long as there's breath in the body, there's still hope. But some of us don't like that hope. Because some of us say, you know, Lord, I've been serving you for 40 years. And they have been fighting me for 40 years. Lord, I don't want them saved. But that's not the Christian fight. The Christian fight is, Lord, save them. The reality of it is, I have neither heaven nor hell to place you in. But you don't have to answer to me. But I tell you, you got to answer to God. Would you fight the good fight? Would you hold on to God's unchanging hand? The good fight. When you tell dying men and women about Jesus Christ. When you tell them how Jesus suffered and died on Calvary's cross. For my sins and your sins. When you tell them how they laid him, they crucified him, and they laid him in a bar tomb. That wasn't the end of the story. See, see, Jesus, he got up. The, the, the seventh chapter of Acts is to say that Stephen fell asleep. Church of a living God. And because Stephen fell asleep, we need those of us in the church today to wake up. We need to wake up and tell God men and women. That Jesus is the way man. Yeah. Oh, Stephen was the first martyr. Yeah. But them stoning him didn't make him a martyr. Yeah. Because Stephen already had it on the inside of him. Yeah. He had already said that I'm going to die. I'll live for God and I'll die for him. Yeah. Why? Because he has something on the inside that was working on the outside. Yeah. And church of a living God, if we can get the Holy Ghost on the inside. We have got something that I carry us through right now. When men and women talk about it, 
Jesus died, he said, told his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send the Holy Ghost to lead you, guide you, and protect you. Church of a living God, we don't walk this journey alone, although they may talk about us. We don't walk this journey alone. We walk it in the power of God. So hold on to God's unchanging hand. Keep fighting the good fight. When it looks like those around you have turned their backs on you, keep fighting the good fight. When they talk about you, keep fighting the good fight. When they don't want to hear you sing, you just keep singing anyway. Because somewhere there's somebody that needs a song that you can sing. When they don't want to hear you pray, keep praying anyhow. As long as you have a right relationship with God, don't do it for form or fashion. Don't do it for a show. Don't do it for filthy lucre. But do it because I love the Lord. And church of a living God, I want to let you know right now, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He saved me. He died for me. Rose again on the third day, and because he rose, yeah. I have power. Yeah. Because he's got power. Yeah. Oh yeah. So stars, I haven't dotted every eye. Right. Not crossed every T. Yeah. But each day he's given me another opportunity. Yeah. Right. And thank God I'm better than I was. Right. I'm not all that I should be. But I'm better than I was. And I'm striving. We're climbing. Songwriters say it like this. We're climbing Jacob's ladder. But I want to let you know that I'm every round goes high and higher. Please be patient. We all need a little patience. But in, in getting patience, in being patient, get the Holy Spirit. Because when you have faith and you're full of the Holy Ghost, yeah, sure. you can fight yes, the good fight. Yeah. Stephen, he died fighting the good fight. Mm -hmm. Though they slay me, yet I'm going to trust you. And we got to believe that. Time is winding up. They tell me on the job, I'm I'm uh, I'm so close to retirement. I'm thinking about retirement. They say they say you don't you don't you don't care you don't care if they if they do this or they do that. I tell them I tell them exactly exactly right quick what they need to do. And they they say you know some of them say they're too young. They can't tell that because they have a long road ahead. But I want to tell you right now, I'm too close to my journey then to turn back now. So just like on my job, close to retirement, and things, it doesn't matter because what's going on. Uh -huh. I'm too close to my journey then to turn back now. I've seen through too many things. I've been through too many trials and tribulations. I've been through too many ups and downs. And I know that it was God that brought me through. It was God that brought me through a tumor. It was God that brought me through a uh, uh, cancer. It was God that survived us, brought my wife and family through that accident three years ago. Nobody but God. And just because I can't run as fast as you run, don't mean I'm not ready. Just because you can't run as fast as I run, right. don't mean you're not running. Amen. But as long as you're running, yes, run for the Lord. Right. Right. Don't try to fool anyone else. Right. I know people, when certain people get in the company, they talk one way. Yeah. Uh -huh. because they try to impress them. Yes, but I want to tell you, when the impression is over with, <laughs> you're back to yourself. <laughs> so you just gotta you just gotta be you gotta be real for the Lord right. and let me tell you something you can't be real for the Lord on Sunday Amen. and the devil won't know you can't say hallelujah on 
on Sunday. And curse me out on Monday. Stephen filled with the Holy Spirit. It didn't say that he always was filled. But when they called him, he was filled. And he lived out that Holy Ghost life. So church of the living God, all I tell you this morning as I leave you, hold on to God's unchanging hand and keep striving. Don't let no one, don't let anyone turn you away from God. Because I want to tell you something. It's a sad thing to proclaim something all your life. And on the judgment day, he say, depart from me. I know you not. Fighting the good fight. Keep fighting for the Lord. If you keep fighting for the Lord, he will never let you down. Amen. The choir is going to give us a selection of their shorts. And we do a standing invitation. If there shall be one today who do not know Jesus is a part of your sin. I don't know if I'll see you again. Because I don't know the reality of it is. We don't even know if we'll leave this building on our own time. But I do know right now while we stand here let us stand that we all thank God. Let me share this with you. A few weeks ago my wife and I was out and dealing with her family. And one of her nephews, one of our nephews was choking. And they were trying to dislodge. And you know how sometimes when you're choking, they want to, you know, pack you on your yeah. back. And, uh, you know, nobody went to do the Hamlet yeah, maneuver. Right. It wasn't that desperate. But they was packed. And one of the customers at uh, a table across for me said, raise your hand. He raised his hand and he did not call and show anymore. She said that raising your hands allows you to clear your airway. And I want to tell you this morning, we got too many choking Christians because you won't raise your hand to give God the glory. You need to raise your hand and clear your spiritual your spiritual mind. Yeah. Just like Stephen. Yeah. I see the glory of God. Yeah. And Jesus sitting on the right hand of God. That's the reason why you may have noticed when the choir was singing the opening hymn. I raised my hand and focus on Jesus Christ. Forget about everybody else. Forget about those around you and say, Lord, I thank you.
acknowledge what the Lord has done. Fight the good fight. Wonderful job. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you to the Abides as well. Do it as well. Yes, Mother Barnes. I want Brother 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 Wentz and Brother Dad Song for Minutes for it. Brother Sister Johnson. What song is that? Oh, thank you. All right, we're going to prepare ourselves to close. Let us rise to our feet and quash and give us to our closing collection. I'll be all right.